Hello friends, this is Prashant from Laboratory Odyssey. So we are going to start a new series in which we are going to learn about different concepts headed with maximum integration framework via different hands-on video. So please like and share these videos and subscribe to the channel. This gives me support to work on such content. As you know, it takes a lot of effort and time to put together, put together something like that. And I hope that you will like these videos and you will learn from these videos. And if you have any questions or you need my help, then obviously you can comment that below the video and then I will try my best to help you out with that particular concern. So I hope that you are ready for this particular hands-on. Let's learn together. Happy learning. So today we are going to discuss about maximum integration framework, which is also known as MIF. So this is one of the most important component in Maximo, which provides you the ability to exchange the data with different external systems. And this is used. This is the system which used to be known as MIA earlier. Uh, that is Maximo Enterprise Adapter, especially when it was in Maximo six. And after Maximo six, when six, Maximo seven came, since then it is known as Maximo Integration Framework. And uh, this provides you the ability to do the integration with external systems like SAP, MS Dynamics and any other system to exchange the data into inbound and outbound integration touch points. And it supports synchronous and asynchronous both mode of communication. So what is inbound and what is outbound? So inbound is that when any external system is sending data to Maximo that will be known as inbound to Maximo. And the outbound will be that Maximo is sending some data to some other system. So we can take an example that items are getting graded into SAP and items are coming from SAP to Maximo while the issue transactions are happening in Maximo against the work order and transaction is going to SAP that will be called as outbound. The second term here which we have to also understand is synchronous and asynchronous mode. So what is synchronous when the transactions are happening in real time using web services or the REST APIs then the data will be exchanged in real time without any delay. This is known as synchronous while that when the data is getting trans, uh, transferred from Maximo to other system or from other system to Maximo in asynchronous way whether it is passing via the queue or there is a delay even for a second, we will say that particular transaction as asynchronous transaction. So the example of asynchronous transaction are file based integration, uh, XML based integration, database table that is interface table based integration. These all are example of asynchronous mode of communication. And if we go to Maximo, you can see that this whole Maximo integration framework has these different applications and these different applications are used for certain purposes. So some of them are highlighted here and listed here. This is not obviously a list of all of them, but then you will have external system, publish channel, you have enterprise service, invocation channel, you have object structures, then you have endpoint, JMSQ or you have Apache Kafka, you have application map message processing or max, uh, message processing, then you have web services and then you have rest and OSL API. So all these are different components, not necessarily the different applications. For example, JMSQ and Apache Kafka is not different application, but it is part of the external system and one of the important component to pull the data. Similarly, rest and OSL APIs are dependent on the object structure application and they do not have a separate dedicated application. So this is something which you should keep in mind. Uh, now this diagram shows you some of the information. You will be able to understand further about it uh, in subsequent sessions. But as I said, if you see, you have external system and then you have Maximo. So business object are the tables like I said work order location where the data will be saved in Maximo. Then you have object structure which is the collection of different tables. So if you want to share some information 
related with asset and its related work order then you will require some of the fields from each of this object and you can create an object structure to bind them together then between both of them as i said there are multiple different kind of uh, communication possible so anything coming in maximo is inbound and anything going out from maximo taxon system is outbound and on the basis of inbound and outbound you will decide which component you will be using then if you are having a publish channel this is something which is used for outbound transaction so you can see that uh, this yellow color component all are for outbound and for green color components are for the inbound so you have jms queues which are available to hold the data in outbound and inbound both uh, type of integration then you have different kind of web services available and then you have uh, publish channel you also have enterprise service which also provides a asynchronous mode of communication for taking data from external system to maximo you have invocation channel which provides the capability to sync the data in synchronous way so this are the these are some of the component you know which you can see here uh, and uh, as i said that going forward as the session will process you will be able to understand the details and functioning of each of these components